So, um, welcome to the Morris Federation's uh, series of online workshops during lockdown. And today we have Andrew Knight, Lynn Steele, and Tony Warren from the Knights of King Ina Jig team, who are going to teach us um, the jig Bonnet So Blue from Bucknell. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Andrew. Thank you very much, Pauline and Jenny for hosting all of these things um, to Tony and Lynn for joining me in, in helping this out. Um, nice to see a few familiar faces in the audience and Debs, Dave um, and a few others that uh, I can't remember. Clive, I can see. Um, we're going to run through Bucknell, but just before we begin the first bits and pieces, let's just go through a warming up. So if you'd like to get yourselves into your safe space, no trip hazards and all the rest of it. Um, I'm just going to get you to walk on the spot, just literally up and down walking on the spot and um, just to start to raise the um, process through. Lynn has approached. I think she's going to say something. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I'm just, gonna I'm just trying to work out why down. I have Pauline in big on my screen. <laughs> And then raising off the ground, just in a stepping. And this is an ideal time to comment on good stepping practice. And what I would like to get across on good stepping practice is that stepping is not running on the spot. To give you an idea of what I mean, this would be running on the spot. This is not Morris stepping. This is Morris stepping. And you'll see the stepping that I'm using here is double step. That's what we're going to be using today. And we're going to be using a right foot start. So we're going right, left, right, hop. And then left, right, left, hop. Now start to add the arms in. So you're getting the arm movements going. And I'd like you to time it so that your arms are going up as you hop. Then I'd like you to go sideways. And when you go to the right, just use your right arm. This will just warm you into some things that we're going to do a little bit later in terms of the steps that we're going to use. And take a bit of a break. For warming up, we can often use this as a stepping practice type of time where your foreman can get across what they want you to do with the steps themselves. And it's an ideal time just to brush up on that part of the dancing that you're gonna to want to do. We set aside an hour and a half and we had a dry run last week and we can just about get through this in an hour and a half. So I do hope that we, the speed is not gonna to be too, too fast and that you are gonna have a little bit of time for questions just while I'm getting my breath back because we haven't been dancing for a year and it takes its toll when you're on the wrong side of 50. Okay, so we're going to start with Bucknell. Bucknell has a very brisk digital type of feel to it. It's very much a snappy type of movement. That's often interpreted as being quickly danced. And I don't believe that that's true, that you can only interpret it that way. And in Koki, we don't. We go for a much slower presentation and we'll look to actually show each of the steps so that you complete the steps before you go on to the next. And that shows the dance off really nicely. However, the movements with the arms particularly, you can then just give it a really sharp, pull down through um, 
on the one step. So if we go into back to double steps for the arm part of it, what I would like to do is to get this downward movement, this very sharp downward movement on the one, the first footfall. They should go from up to down in one footfall. <clears throat> and if you've got handkerchiefs, you should be able to hear them crack. Um, Sue, we'll get to the tune in a bit. So you're going to do one, two, three. Oh. And the movement down is literally as the foot comes down, the hands come down. The specifics are that you go from up and up here is chin to forehead height in a very sharp snap down to the seams of the trousers if you're going to be really picky with the position um rather jokingly one night we called it the hamster dance because it kind of looks like you've got front paws a bit like a hamster in this so you're literally going to be here with arms bent like that and then it's a crack down so that the arms lengthen to the side so it's not out in front and it's not an arc sweep it's a from here snap down that's the movement that I'd like to try to generate with what you're going to be doing in other notations the hankies are over the shoulders and if you go into the up position with the hankies over the shoulders that's perfectly okay. I have no particular view one way or the other, but they should arrive back here on the hop and not before. And that way it looks very brisk, very snappy, very sharp. Okay, so we try that one through. Um, Kobe, we should try that with through with some music, please, Tony. Um, literally just an introductory A and then an A for some tune. And that way, if we've got any music following issues, we can we can get them um, at least addressed as far as possible right at the beginning. Thank you. Okay, everybody good with that? Yeah, we're all good. We've all got the snappiness. Any particular problems? That's the main tune, Sue, for you. Sorry, I can't do head up and down. My computer isn't big enough. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now we're gonna to start to build the jig up from the beginning. The once to yourself starts with back steps, then is a foot together jump, and then it's six of the doubles, two back steps, and it ends with a foot together jump. The back steps are small. They are very much a fairly standard back step that you'll see in most Morris, but you must keep as much contact between your feet as you can. So it is um, almost like a Bampton or a field town back step. So you're going to go one with the turn of the foot. Please pin my foot. Would you pin my feet, please, Pauline? Okay, lovely. So you're literally going to be from the side from behind <clears throat> and front again please 
okay, what we're looking for there is is that small diminutive type of back step that doesn't show any great volume of, of movement so that you get a contrast between that and the stepping that you're going to end up doing being more vigorous. So you're going to do right foot fall first, back and back and feet together land. That's the first part, then into six doubles, then into two more back steps and a feet together jump. Sorry to hear that, Emily. Um, Winston, yes, please, um, please forgive my um, inability to do what I say and only do what I do. <laughs> the correct way is do what I say, not do what I do. Okay, let's try that with the music. two things um i tried very hard to get my hands in the right position then winston if that is still wrong it's the angle of my camera from my computer being below my uh, it's, it's it's around about kind of here-ish when i'm back in the room but i am trying to do what i say and not what i do okay um the sidestep arms as you approach into the, the sorry the back step arms as you approach into the back step arms as you take the first footfall from your hands here throw them straight out to the side slightly bent elbows because you don't want to go cracking into the ends of the elbows if you can avoid it but it should be that flick out so you'll want to make the preparation right at the very beginning for that so that you can do that on that first footfall and that preparation comes on the the hop the and of the preceding bit if it's the very first bit we take a step forward up onto our toes and then make that move before we back step as the ones to yourself it's slightly different can we do that again tony please just the introduction this time okay is that clear we're all happy good good looks like it fantastic little back steps do you take andrew two back steps very small to, so Two on each foot or? Uh, no, you step, hop, step, hop. Step, hop, step, hop, and then jump. Just that. Feet together. Then feet together. Jump. Um, okay. And the other point we seem, we have to make sometimes to people is the feet together is a whole movement and it counts in music. So the feet together is a preparatory movement, but it actually is a step in its own right. So treat it as a step in its own right. Okay, so let's try that again, please. Okay, all good to go on that one? Lovely. For the next couple of rounds, what I'd like to do is two lots of once to yourself and stepping, please. So it's intro and an A, intro and an A. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, is that all nicely clear? We're all good. Does anybody want anything run through? Excellent, you're all brilliant. I uh, see a two in the waiting room, Pauling. <clears throat> okay, so that's the introductory part. And it's the, um, the foot up part at the beginning of the, of the jig. The next part will be the chorus. Now the chorus is quite long. And the chorus is also in, so I take it into two parts. And it very much feels like a repeat, but is not. So what we're going to do is a set of side steps, both long and short, and then a number of forry capers and plain capers. Now I'm not assuming that everybody is a Cotswold dancer. So for those who are and who know all about this, please bear with me. And for those who aren't, I'll take it at a pace that is, um, hopefully you will be able to practice the steps a bit. Okay, so the notation for the side step is that the feet do not cross and the body does not turn. Now, when you take a look at a lot of people dancing this year, they will dance in what's called a closed side step, and you have to cross the feet and you have to turn the body to do that, although the body part might be optional. But we've interpreted this as an open side step, and an open side step as opposed to closed is what I'm going to demonstrate now. So if it's an open side step, you will take your arm and your leg away from your body with your feet parting. That being an opening movement, whereas the closed side step is your arm and your leg going across your body in the other direction. Now, when you're dancing this as your jig, it is your jig. I have no, there's, there's nothing about what I'm saying that says you have to do it this way. You do it how you wish to do it and how that expresses for you the best you can do. But I'm teaching it as per we have researched it, and that seems to be the, the way that it is being um, put forward. So that's the one we're going to use today. The arm movement is the lead arm, right arm in this case, and the right arm is as high up as you can, right by your head, and then it's downwards to your trouser again, not opened over, but straight down. Um, what some people call chain pulling, straight down, and you'll find a variation in clubs. Some clubs like a real pull down as the snap movement of the double step, and others prefer the float. Because we like contrasts in dances, we are going to use the float down, and it's a float down over one, two, three, up. Okay. So we're going to try the short side steps to begin with and the footfalls for short side steps are literally the same as the doubles. It is right, left, right, hop. So it will be right, left, right, hop. If I come forwards a bit, maybe I won't be out of the camera from behind. Right, left, right, hop. Right, left, right. And then back in the other direction would be left, right, left, hop. Apologise, my desk is slightly in the way. Okay, so with the arm, it's going to be right, left, right, hop, left, right, left, hop. Remembering on the hop, the hands do the next, whatever you're going to be doing next. Okay, so let's just give that a go a few times. Right. Uh, 
Everybody's happy with that? Good, good, good. That's the short side step, which we will use in a little while in this dance. The next part I would like to put forward is the long side step. And the long side step is basically twice the distance without the hop in the middle. So you're going to do right, left, right, left, right, left, right, pop. Some people count it down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, pop. Um, or sometimes they go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, hop. And that one might serve better actually in this instance because the hand movements are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, pop. They are the movements of your hands as they would be made in a side step and then a double step. And I constantly get this one wrong. Okay, so in words, it will be down two, three, four, down two, three, hop, down two, three, four, down two, three, hop. And again, it's the chain pulling for the, for the um, and this is literally down here. It's not down in front and it's not down to the side. So try and keep control over that so that you're coming down two, three, four. Okay. Okay, can we have the B music? Let's just get to the end of that sidestep section, please. Intro A. Spot the deliberate mistake. If anybody noticed where I fudged it, then you're doing really well. If you didn't notice where I fudged it, I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again, please, Tone. <laughs> to that far yep nobody wants to cover it anymore you're a brilliant crowd absolutely brilliant we'll have to do two jigs this afternoon because we're, we're running ahead like mad okay so the next bit is a forry caper and two plain capers now, for those of you who know, please bear with us. And for those of you who don't, a forry caper is a launch from one foot, landing on the other foot, and then changing feet again. So it's going to be basically something along those sort of lines. And from the side, 
again from behind. Okay, one of the things to watch for with this one is that you do take your time over the change of feet on the landing. A lot of places that you'll see, you'll see them changing feet very fast. That kind of pushes the music through somewhat. Um, so please just be aware that if you do rush it, you'll get, a, you'll get ahead of your musician. Um, and just just watch for that. We end up with this one having to push yourself up into the air a little bit early on the music. What I'd like to do now is give Lynn something to do. So please, can we pin Lynn? And I'd like Lynn to get through to the end of the first half of the chorus, please. She's not looking worn out at all. Can we do that one again from the top? Is <laughs> it sure which bit you're doing? Um, uh, intro A into B, please. Okay. I think one of the um, the delays of Zoom here between what Tony's playing and what you're seeing us dance is not going to be very easy to get the characteristic of exactly when you take off for this half caper, uh, forry caper. Um, what my solution is to omit the hop, but use that time for the hop to launch yourself into the air so that you land on the first beat of the next bar rather than step to take off on the first beat um, of the next bar. Um, the hands and the hands for the caper are basically just up and then down so it's up in front and then back out in two j's back to back if you pin lynn she's showing you keep going lynn okay we all got that Andrew, is it possible for people who can't, I can't ever do the mirror image by looking at the screen? You take off from your right, land on left, land on left, then Split. do a quick right left. No, just back to the right. Okay, and take off again from the right. No, left, the right. second time if you need to. I'll keep watching. Uh, it is. It is. Um, Launch, land, change. Do you want to, um, I can't remember who asked that question, do you want to pin Andrew's feet, if that might be easier for you, called Drew? Because spotlight like that. the feet, Ian. Like... Oh, there you go. Yeah, any, any verbals that you can do at the same time will be appreciated, but I'll, I'll probably be able to do it by looking. Uh, the other thing they're called are hut two threes. It'll be hut two three. And from the side, hut two three. And you'll see the hands going up and out. Up and out. Oh, 
all good, Ian? It will be. Good. Uh, Marion, um, for the side steps, you're going to do two long side steps and a long side step occupies two bars each and then two short side steps so you're effectively going quite a lot to the right quite a lot to the left and then a bit to the right and a bit to the left Yes, it's just sent me a message to say that because when we're spotlighting, we're losing people are losing the ability to pin. When we tested this earlier, it was the other way around. So we thought we were safe doing it. Um, okay. So I don't know if people would prefer that we spot stop spotlighting or what. Can you 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 pick, you had two up you had Andrew and Lynn together on the same screen that was really useful. Did that work for everybody or people on iPads? Yes. Well, it, it worked. worked for me on my iPad. It was brilliant. It worked on okay. the Mac. Oh, it worked on the Mac. Okay, so let's try. It. Yeah, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> let's try. It. Should we have Andrew and Andrew's feet then? Would that be? Um, let's try this. That works. Nice. Is that good? Oh, excellent. We've learned, I've learned something today. As well as Bucknell, obviously. You knew that already. <laughs> so it's up, oh, two, three. From the side, it's. Oh, that's better. The point I was making, though, was what we'd normally expect to do if you're musically hitching and musically oriented is you would start the movement at the beginning of the bar of music that you're going to be dancing in. Where for this one, you don't. You have to launch early. You actually have to launch on the anacrusis of the previous bar because you need to land change as the first two things in that bar. What we'll make the attempt of in a minute is as I've got an alternative music that comes through my channel direct. And for this bit, maybe it would be more useful to not have that delay. Tone, do you think that's a good plan? Sounds good to me. Should we give that one a minute, um, a moment of a go, and I'll just play the, um, I'll play the B music and dance that part of the B music. Yeah, um, let's give it a go. Bear with, I've got to find that bit. Yeah, please do. I'm just getting to be. Did that work out? Generally on the, the ha I've got happy sounds on this screen. Yeah, I think that it looks overall, but they prefer that. Yeah, much better for me, otherwise I'm just getting speak of you. Something's gone weird here. Yeah, it's, it's just Zoom weird. Um, Hillary, unfortunately, that's that tends to be what happens. It, it, Zoom just has the delay, and they've got the the delay of me listening to Tony, and then both of them coming to you um, is 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 possibly going to introduce even a second's worth of delay in this. And we we don't we really don't have anything much we can do with that. Not today. Um, 
uh, Sarah Linda, yeah, slightly, but the styling differences are what we're we're going through. Um, it, the the Fori capers basically are, a, are a early performance. You you don't put them in the bar. You put them just over the bar line, literally. Uh, yes, Jan, I will. Uh, Cami, you've got it spot on. Uh, Carol, tell me again what it is you're concerned with. Uh, it's too far up the stream now. I'll come back to that. Let's do that one again. Um, I'm going to do half an A and then a B. OK. Here we go. Did you get that? Again, 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 again. And refer you to what I said earlier. Do as I say, not do what I do. Shall I try the double spotlight again? Yep. It seems to have come off mine, but. Yep. It becomes a bit organic when you're concentrating on teaching different things in different ways. Okay, we're doing it again. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, the, the track that we've got is playing half an A and then into the, the first half of the B. I'm going to let that run a couple of times and let's just practice that through a few times. Okay, going in four. How do we go? Sarah, I've just done the end of the A music into the first part of the B music. 
So you've gone from the end of the verse into the chorus. Jan, yes, you end up with one foot in the air. This is important. Okay, are we happy to move on or do we want to do that again? If anybody says do again, we're doing it again. Jane, the, um, the sharp tug down is for double steps and that second half of the long side step. The floating arm is for the first part of the side step and the single side step. Yes, ultimately we will be doing it from the beginning. Um, Ian, you launch from right, land left, change back to right. Again no. has been requested, so we'll do it again. No, you don't actually. Launch from right. You land, land on the right. Yeah, I beg your pardon, Lynn, you're quite right. I'm, I'm getting more confused now. Launch from right. No, launch from left. Lynn? Different voice. So you're like this. Okay, you should have your right leg in there. So you're on your left foot. So you're going up the leg. Okay. Well, so you're going to land right foot first. Right, left, right. Okay. We're good. Thank you, Lynn. Good job somebody knows how to do it. Cheers. Okay, we're going again, same thing. You spotlight Lynn this time, please. How's that for people? Can you see three on the oh, screen? I was just about to ask you that, if you could do that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, oh, good. Bad. Right, so I'll put the feet on the bottom. Anyway, we'll try that. Do you want to do it with the recording or do you want to do it with Tony playing? It's sad, but it's, there's less lag with the recording. It's a shame, obviously, not to have live musician. But... stop there because I've got the wrong bit of music on. <laughs>
take a break for a moment. Uh, Sarah, yes, it is the caper. Okay, questions. Cheryl. In the long side step, your if you're going to the right, your left foot goes behind, but Lynn brings her feet together. Which yeah, my error, hand. not Lynn's. Watch Lynn. Follow Lynn. Follow Lynn. <laughs> I did notice that in myself and I corrected it, I hope, the last time. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else need anything? Uh, it's the Fori cake, Ran. Dave, I'm sorry about the cake. It's in your oven. Um, just for those who don't know, Dave is referring to normally with a Koki workshop, there is loads and loads and loads of cake. In fact, I spend most of the day pushing people to eat cake, more cake, because uh, inevitably we've bought too much. And um, <clears throat> that's that's basically what he's referring to. Uh, Winston, yes, there is two plain capers on the end. And that should leave you with your left leg in the air. I hope. I've got the thumbs up from Lynn, so I must have guessed right. <laughs> okay. What a mic. <laughs> we'll have to tell people to bring their own cake next time. Yes, absolutely. Um, whoever needs to answer the door, go ahead. <laughs> That'll be Lynn then. <laughs> okay, the second half of the chorus. Um, this is not quite a repeat and the music is not quite a repeat either. But for the second part of the chorus, you're going to do the long sidestep part again. Lynn's got supplies of cake. Uh, we're going to do the long side step again, and this time we do. <laughs> and this time we do um, two forry capers, and then four plain capers. Okay. Now the same thing happens with the forry capers this time as last time, is you've got to launch early. That's the thing, Cammy. No, you've got to start on the right foot. There is a fudge step there. Well spotted. There is in even the musical notation, the original notation, the fudge step is there. It's the left, it's a change of foot on the anacrusis, so you're ready to go with the right foot again. Okay, would you like a demo? Grand. Um, I'll do it to live this time, Tony, please. Can we have the whole B? <clears throat> Thank you. 
and somewhere in there I got my footing wrong. No idea where. <laughs> I thought I didn't because I've got to start with the left and the next time. That's fine. <laughs> and that's where you put that little tiny fudge in just to get yourself back into the correct um, mode. Okay. Whole chorus? No, we're not okay, Judy. What's um? What can I do to help? Um, can you just explain it again? Because I couldn't. I thought I understood what you said, and then when I saw what you did, I didn't understand it anymore. Okay. Um, what you're going to be looking at doing is you've got the forry caper towards the end of the first half. Hop. There. You're then going to do caper, caper. Your left leg is now in the air and you need to take off with your right leg over there. So you're going to go and one, two, three, hop. In that transition halfway through the B. Thanks. Does Lynn agree? Yeah. She does. Yeah. That's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the catch piece there to go through is it okay only... whole chorus sorry uh, Ian sorry Andrew <clears throat> when you come out of that forry caper and the two little capers and you fudge and go right is that a long side step again yes it is right on the repeat it's a long side step right a long side step left two forry capers four plain capers Okay. Linda's shaking her head. No, that's right. <laughs> that's I know it right. was. <laughs> okay. Um, B music, please, Tone. Four bars in this time. We're good. Anybody saying no? I think Judy's put her hands in her head. Okay, and a question from. It's, I just need practice time. <laughs> um, the other thing from Cami no, there is no short sidestep on the second half. No problems, Carol, we'll do that again. Same again, please. left in there and I'm ending up with my right in there. Uh, incompetence on my part I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do it every time though so I'm not sure what I'm missing. I'll have to look. That one is a regular one for me. Sarah have fun. See you next time.
Okay, is everybody good to go? We've got 30 minutes left of this, not counting over run time. <laughs> um, we have one section left to complete. And then we can do the whole, the whole thing several times. And you can take it to bits a little bit afterwards. Are we happy to go on? Marion, uh, Morris Fed will email you the link, I'm sure. Okay, so the last part is the slow capers, the slow section. There is only one slow section in this, and it's repeated twice in this dance. So the whole dance is going to be a foot up and a jig, a double caper and a jig, and a double caper. And it finishes on the second double caper. It does not proceed on to the third jig. And by the time you get there and are puffing, believe me, you're going to be quite happy for it to stop right there. <laughs> the double capers have got a number of different notations. Um, in English dance and song for 1970, whatever it is, doo -doo -doo, it's, it's volume 41, page 13. Um, has the um, the, the complete um, words by Russell Wortley on how to do a double caper. Um, Cecil Sharp is in Morris book five, page 18, if you want to go and look at it. Um, but they start to talk about what is a fairly vigorous shaking of the leg. Um, and I will leave people to do what they say exactly. Um, if you feel like you're up to the challenge of waggling your leg in the air repeatedly in about no time. What most teams do, and what I'm going to put forwards, is the step and the hop with two pushes forward of the leg. And it's basically, if you were to caper onto your right and then caper onto your right again, all you would do would be hopping on your right and making the free leg movement a second time. And it looks like this. And on the other leg, like that. So step, hop, step, hop, push, push. And from the front and behind it's And to get these looking right, it's very it's very important to get your posture line in a, in a really good place. So if you see where I'm there, my foot is under the line right the way through to my ear. So this is now free and independent, even with that. Otherwise, you kind of end up off balance and all over the place, which is not really what you're trying to achieve. So keep your foot right under you and keep your head nose line over your foot when you do these. And what you'll find is you could be doing that for ages. And to keep your balance with your arms, it's these arms. And it's once per caper. So the whole thing together would be like that. Len, try and keep your feet closer together when you do this, and that way you won't kind of be doing that. That's better. Lovely. Now do this with your arms, because that'll help you be in your place. Wonderful. What I'm going to also get you to do is to do this from the elbows rather than from the shoulders. What I'd like you to do is to keep your elbows well in so that you're doing this only with the forearm. And it's a forearm movement, not a wrist movement. So it's not that. Keep the elbows well in. Jam your elbows into your waists, literally. That serves a second purpose 
and that is to make the upward movement um, a much snappier movement. And in the notation from Sharp, he says it's different to waves. This is called jerks rather than waves. Waves are what you do in Bledington. This is much snappier. And that's where the brisker part comes in for this movement. And it's about brisk hands, but controlled legs and feet. So your hands are doing move and still, move and still, but your feet are going through the movement all the time. So again, it's going to be for the capers and for double capers, you just change feet every second movement. And when you're practicing this, it might be as well to practice it as a series of plain capers first and then just stop changing your feet. So you'll be doing practice, 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 practice. Does that make sense? All good? Lovely. The slow section then completely is going to be eight double capers and then the end section of the foot up. So two doubles, two back steps and a feet together jump, except at the very end where you do four plain capers, but that's kind of default for jigs, the end on capers. Okay, so it's four doubles, Sorry, eight doubles, two back, two double steps, and two back steps, feet together, jump. The first time, eight double capers, two double steps, four plain capers. The second time, okay, clear as mud. Yay! Right, um, let's just try that without the music for a minute, please, um, because we have comments on to uh, how to time this with the tune a little bit later, but I won't do that now because it may confuse what we're trying to do. So let's just try that without the music first. Okay, we're ready to go. So we want ready and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down. Everybody got the sequence okay? Yeah, we're all good. Brilliant. I'd like you to really hold that in your head, that that's what, you're, that's what you're going to do. Because when it comes to it, the music doesn't quite match that. And people will end up trying to wonder about the music and where the music is with this, and then find that they've lost two bars, um, wondering what to do. You have to hold your nerve and make your count so that you know that you've got to the end of those double capers and you just set out on the stepping. The music resolves and it will catch you at the end. But you have to hold your nerve. OK, so let's try this with some music, I think, please. Let's see how we get on live and we might have to switch to the recording.
did that work out for people? We're all good. After uh, the interestingly, I thought that this was the one where we were all going to fall over. <laughs> Ian, after the double capers. Yep. Before you go to back and feet together jump, what are you doing? Two doubles. Two doubles, right. Okay, Carol, we'll do it again. Just so as you know, before we start, it is eight double capers. It is two double steps. It is two back steps. And it is a foot together jump. of streaming glitches for me on that one I expect there were for everybody else as well yeah. Yeah. okay Carol Tina again okay we'll do that same again please happy with that that was great <laughs> how are we doing now is that any clearer or is it more muddy we're good we're good fantastic then we should put the whole jig together In an ideal world, Helene, yes, it would. The world is at the moment less than ideal. Okay, whole dance from the beginning. Thank you. 
have another set of slows. We do. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> now they've got to do it all over again. <laughs> well, that's a shame. <laughs> Catch your breath, we'll do it again. Um, I don't, just looking at that um, question that's come up, I don't think calling would work because it would cancel out Tony, would it? Yeah. Unfortunately, and then, then the music will play catch up, so you'll get out of time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure they've got the breath to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe cue cards. Have a good time, Ian. Uh, yes, Malcolm, there are. Um, the Knights of King Ina stream has some. Um, let Helene back in, please, Pauline. Um, uh, Knights of King Iron Tube has some. Um, our 2014 is exactly what we're doing today. Um, the more recent ones that we um, put around have got uh, closed side steps in, not open, um, as it was just a whole practice that we were playing around with it that we recorded. Um, but the 2014, where Lynn, myself, and Sam Ross are dancing, is exactly what we're doing today. Um, and I think I sent uh, Pauline the um, the link to that. Yeah, they should have had that. It's on the website, and it should have been in my email as well. Right. Yeah, it is, on, it is in the email. All the links are Good. there. Yeah, and they're still on the website, and they'll remain on the website for if you, people lose it. They can go back to the event that's still there, and it'll be there for you. Right. So someone said, is it possible to just run through the order of the steps? Um, is there a mind of what comes next? Is that Jill? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the 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 steps are six doubles, two backs, foot together, jump. That's the foot up. For the chorus, it's long side right, long side left, short side right, short side left into a forry caper, two plain capers, quick switch of the feet, and then it's a long side right, long side left, two forry capers, four plain capers. And then for the slow section, it's eight double capers, two double steps, two back steps, Feet together, jump the first time through. And the second time through, it is eight double capers, two double steps, and then four plain capers with your presentation position at the end. And that's the as noted. Um, and I think we're using George Butterworth's music for this, if I'm not mistaken, Tone. Yeah. Um, and th those are George Butterworth's um, original handwritten pencil notes taken uh, on, on a field trip. And that's the tune we're using. Fine. There we go. All good. Got your breaths back. Doing better than me then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go again. Whole dance from the top.
Okay, we have five minutes left. Uh, I'm happy to take questions. <clears throat> They're all too puffed out to ask. <laughs> Anne, you're looking worried. Anne Mees, you're looking worried. <laughs> and you're muted. <laughs> Which is just as well. <laughs> <laughs> Computer's literally dying. Okay, well, that's fine. I was just getting my breath back. But I can sort of put in about nine of those double capers and it still fits in. So I'm obviously missing something in the step before. Uh, possibly. <laughs> uh, Lynn? Any ideas? Lynn? No, I, I don't know how you'll get that extra one in, but obviously you've managed it somehow. It sort of fitted into the music, so I must be missing something. <laughs> no, I won't come across that before, do you think? Okay. <laughs> um, I might make the suggestion that you're you're adding an extra one and then missing a double caper, and then missing a double step. Possibly. Because the music does suggest that you start the double steps later than you think, which is why we're saying you have to keep your nerve. Mm -hmm. um, and not not think you're still double capering when actually you should have switched. Okay, probably. You do you have chance to do it again if you've got your breath? And I know there's a number of re re requests for that coming down the list. So, uh, Jess, yes, we can do that for you. Um, maybe not now, but since I know you. <laughs> Drew? Yes. Could sorry, I can't do this the this chat somewhere like okay. you know you went through is it your brain just to spend 30 seconds just going through the steps again because I've got a pen now. Oh okay. Um the once to yourself is two back steps, foot together jump. Yeah. Stuart, it's great to see you. Um the foot up is six doubles, two back steps, foot together jump. We have got the notation, haven't we? We in have. In the email, there's a link to the notation if people want to oh, pick right. that up. Or I can do that for you at a different time, Jules, because I know yeah, you that, as well. Yeah, that's fine. I'll look at the, I'll look at the email as well. Thanks, Drew. No worries. Um, dance it again, then.
was the answer. Yes, you got what it. What you said. <laughs> <laughs> that was better. It's, yeah, it's hitching it to the music. Yeah. yeah. I lost um, it probably three times in that. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Well done, everybody. Any final questions for Andrew or Lynn? There's a question. Um, that's entirely up to you, Ab. Um, I probably would land. Uh, I think if you're doing a caper, you would land with one foot in the air. That's true. Um, however, I tend to do a bit of a flourish at the end and land on two feet. But that's just me. Um, and the, uh, the ultimate point here is if you're doing a museum piece jig, go back to the original notes and do it exactly as it's written. If, however, you're doing it in a, I've looked at the original and I would like to do it like this because it expresses me and my dancing to do this, then I think you would be perfectly entitled to do what absolutely everybody else from Cecil Sharp onwards has done and that's change it to suit yourself <laughs> they only took a snapshot that's all they took but if you're happy with it and you've got your head around how to dance the steps and then present it well to the public that you're presenting it to you go in and you own the space. You then end up doing your performance, engaging with the population that are watching you. And you finish and exit your space, only handing it over to the next person. You do not cede your space willingly. You actually begrudgingly give it away to somebody for a while. It's all part of the performance and you're performing even if you're just saying hello to somebody in the crowd. If you're in the space, you're performing. OK, uh, other questions and then we'll warm down. Thank you, Lynn, for reminding me of that. Uh, Debs has got a question. When's the next one? Pauline. <laughs> Be decided. When do you want the next one? Oh, no, I shouldn't ask that. It'll be next week, won't it, if I ask that question? I don't know. We are looking at some other dates. Don't worry, there will be another one. One a month would be great. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Uh, the Ilmington is going to be put on again in March. I think, is it the end of March? I can't remember. I think we need, we'll chat after this and um, okay. it'll go out in the, ne in the next um, the next newsletter. I've got a few more uh, talks and workshops that have been booked, so it'll go in that one. Great, best of luck with it, Winston. Um, right, can I just say thank you to Tony, thank you for Fifth for putting this on, thank you for Jenny and Pauline for giving up your time and just sitting there watching us do it <laughs> and making it all happen for everybody. Thank you to Lynn for coming along and joining in this whole thing, it's been brilliant. Um, I shall expect a reprise of this at Mendip on Monday, please, Cheryl and Debs. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, next week for Andrew, Annabelle, Jules, <laughs> when we're doing the Koki practice. Okay, so I just want to say, um, well, I'll ask you to unmute and applaud in a second, but um, if you have enjoyed the workshop, it'd be lovely if you can bob a few quid into the Koki's chosen charity, which is uh, the Oval Blood Bikes. Um, so if you could, that would be great. It's, details are in the emails. Um, so just uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself and give a round of applause to Andrew Knight, Lynn Steele, oh, and we'll see you at the next workshop, whenever that is. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.